Is there a 13th sign in the zodiac? Well, the short answer is, no. The long answer is, maybe. It's a very reasonable question to be asking yourself. In this video we will explain exactly why the 13th sign, Ophiuchus, also known as the snake, didn't get his own home in the horoscope charts. In order to explain the mystery of Ophiuchus, let's first take a look at constellations. The universe consists of endless stars. Some are close to one another and some aren't. When you look up into the sky on a clear night you'll see a bunch of them. Some stars seem close to each other whilst in fact they aren't. The reason for this, is because we can't tell how far away they are individually. It's like having a 2D image of a 3D situation. Constellations are a group of stars that seem to be bundled together when we glance at the universe. Often they have been given a name like the Big Bear or Orion, for example. More famous ones are Aries, Taurus, Gemini and so on. They are the ones associated with our horoscope. The easiest way to describe the zodiac, is the annual path that the sun seems to travel through space. We are aware that the sun isn't exactly moving, but from Earth it seems like it does. So, from down here, we can observe the sun and take a look at the stars that are displayed in its background. Through the course of a year the background changes and so do the stars in it. We can see different constellations appearing as the year goes by. This area that the sun seems to pass, and all stars included, is what we call the zodiac. All constellations within this space have been categorized as zodiac signs. There are two kinds of astrology, sidereal and tropical. Now, if you take a look at the constellations map, you'll notice that they aren't exactly lined up. One constellation is big, one is small, some are close to each other and some are further apart. In fact, they sometimes overlap, or there's even an empty space between them. In sidereal astrology that's no problem at all, since we focus on the constellations. The sun could be passing one constellation for a month whilst the next one only lasts for a couple of days. In other words, the constellations that rule at the moment are what sidereal astrology is all about. This picture explains what we mean by that. The red lines represents the path of the sun. The amount of time the sun spends within the area of a certain constellation is shown by the yellow lines. Now, in tropical astrology, this is totally different, because the zodiac is divided into 12 equal seasons. This should sound familiar to most of you. Over the course of about a month, there is one constellation that gets to rule. It shouldn't sound like a surprise, that the chosen ones are Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius and Pisces. Twelve zodiac signs that each last for about a month. The yellow lines border each season. As you probably notice, there are seasons where you could actually have two zodiac signs. They overlap as shown in the middle square. However, that's just not how tropical astrology works. There is one sign that represents the individual season. Ophiuchus is a constellation positioned pretty close to the zodiac. It's quite big, which probably is one of the reasons why it grabs so much attention. To a small extent, it even crosses Scorpio, like a long arm reaching out to it. So yes, the sun passes a tiny portion of Ophiuchus. There are a few constellations that do the same, and slightly take a part in the zodiac. Should we add all of them to the list of zodiac signs? That would result in more than 12 signs. Or should we give Ophiuchus a portion of the month? People say that it deserves a spot between November 29th and December 18th. But, if we do that, it would mean the whole tropical approach of astrology should be turned upside down completely. Ophiuchus is still regarded as a constellation, and not as a sign. Therefore, it has been decided, that we stick with the existing 12 leaders, so to speak. 
even though we classify Ophiuchus as not being part of the zodiac signs, it's totally understandable how it in a way could or maybe even should be. Even though it's a tiny portion, it still deserves some attention. Besides, did you know that the sun doesn't pass the constellation Aries at all? It comes close, that's true, but that's about it. So yes, it's all a bit confusing. Another question we ask ourselves, what about the double signs? Should we come up with separate signs for these areas too? And what about the empty spaces? There's one empty space between Gemini and Cancer for example. Would people born on these days have no zodiac sign at all? And therefore no horoscope? We're very curious what you think of all this and if Ophiuchus should have its own domain as a 13th sign. Should we turn the whole zodiac upside down? Or does astrology and the horoscopes work fine the way they are today? Let's wait and see what the future will bring. For more astrology and numerology insights feel free to visit our website.